Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. This week's video is not the one I had planned. Well over a month ago when I wrote the March content, I was going to be talking about time management tips for students studying abroad. That one's going to have to wait for obvious reasons. Right now, people aren't talking about going somewhere else to learn. They're asking the question, how can we bring learning to us and to others via technology? Well, that's our topic for today. The big area of growth for me over the last several months has been with video. And so much of the hesitation before was the mechanics of how to do it. Well, I'm certainly no expert, but today I'm gonna to share with you what I've learned, what I'm doing, and how you can do it for free. Well, free, except for the little bit of equipment. We'll talk about recording, editing, and having a place to house your video. But first, I'll talk about the equipment I use, what I'm using right now. As far as the camera, there's no tripod, no expensive uh, camera. I'm using a little Logitech webcam. In the show notes and in the blog post, I'll have a link to a model that you can pick up at Amazon for $75. You can also find cheaper models. If your computer has a built-in webcam, use that. I mean, use what you have. Don't let equipment be the stumbling block to getting started. One suggestion, my webcam is sitting on top of my monitor, so it's aimed down just a little at me. In the background, you're getting a view of things that are important to me. So I don't even use a green screen behind me. It's just, this is my home office. Often people using the webcam that they have on their computer have the screen at an upward angle so that what you're seeing is behind the, where the wall and the ceiling meet, so not such a good background. So you wanna have that, uh, that webcam just a little bit above you. That may mean if you're on your laptop, putting it on some books to get it uh, the height that you need it. As far as the microphone, the microphone that I'm using is a Blue Yeti. I have a link in the show notes and on the blog the cost is right about $150, and you can also find it for less if you pick up a, a used model. In front of me is a light kit that I received as a gift. The cost is about $120. Uh, here is the box that the whole thing came in, very compact. Uh, now, you could use a couple of lamps on each side of the monitor, but what you want is that the light is source is shining at you rather than being behind you. So that's it as far as equipment. Now let's talk about the software. I'm recording right now in Zoom. You can create an account for free right now over at zoom.us. One reason I like Zoom is because I've used it to conduct online meetings with coaching clients, uh, conducting webinars, or being a guest on podcasts. Uh, so it, it's using software that I already know and giving it one more purpose. So I start the meeting just like I would start the meeting with another person. The only thing uh, that I would do differently is I'm hitting the record button. When I'm done, I hit the stop button uh, the one to end the meeting. So what happens then? Well, Zoom automatically downloads three files to my desktop or to a folder uh, in the Zoom folder. If you don't see that happening, you'll check your downloads or you'll check that Zoom folder. I'll show you a demo of that in a second. You'll only need one of those three files. And as you open each one, you'll quickly see what I'm talking about. So before we leave Zoom to talk about editing, let's look at screen sharing and another little trick. When I move my mouse to the bottom of the screen, I see some controls that start to appear. One of those says sharing. I click on that and a little controls open for me to share my screen. And so right now you're looking at my computer screen. You're automatically seeing over in the corner a smaller picture of me. Uh, now Zoom does that for you automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. And then when I'm done, I can just go back down to 
uh, my little controls and I can click stop sharing and now it pops back up in the center for you. Now notice I was having to do a little fumbling for all of that. I was having to look down and find the button to click on. So when I edit this, I'm able to cut all of that out. Let me show you what it would look like if I was sharing my screen and then unsharing my screen after it's been edited. So now you see me, now you see my screen, now you see me again. And that was all pretty seamless because I cut out all the fumbling. Notice I could also have shared a whiteboard. And there, there we are. So if I'm trying to teach something online, I've got this whiteboard, I can draw, I can erase, just you know, play around with it before you actually need to use it. And so now let's unshare the screen again. I'm gonna be doing some fumbling on my end, but you're not gonna see that because I'll edit that part out. Before we leave Zoom, I wanna show you one more trick. I'm gonna share my screen again, and you're gonna see something that has made video doable for me. It's a teleprompter. Maybe you can talk off the cuff. I like to at least have some notes, but the thing I see about myself is that if I look down at notes or even a little off to the side, it's painfully obvious. So here's what I use. It's a teleprompter and you can get it free at least for now. You can find it at teleprompt.me. I have it directly in front of me and centered under the webcam. Notice that this teleprompter follows my voice. I am not having to manually scroll, nor am I having to keep up with it simply scrolling at its own speed. And if I happen to go off script, if I just start to talk about something else, the weather, whatever it may be, that teleprompter just stops it seems to know when I get back on script and the teleprompter knows it and starts to scroll again. Did you see what just happened? You can get one at the address that I'm gonna put in the show notes in the blog post. I composed this text in Evernote on my laptop during waiting time. The text synced to Evernote. Uh, the text synced to Evernote this desktop computer. Well, that doesn't make much sense. I didn't do a very good job of proofreading before I pasted this in, did I? I copied and pasted the text into the square that you see right up here. So this was just simply composed in Evernote uh, on my laptop during waiting time, the computer sync. Now it's in an Evernote note on my desktop computer. I copied the text, I pasted it right here, and that's what produces the text that you're seeing right here. So, uh, that's the teleprompter. Now I'm going to unshare my screen again and uh, we'll go on from there. That's enough for now. I would encourage you to get started before learning any more. You'll make mistakes, you'll learn from them, you'll get better, and you'll get faster. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thanks for stopping by. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.